In my last video on Patreon, I brought up some of my concerns with Patreon, and I read all the comments, and I really appreciate the comments. There were a couple comments that were... <laughs> um, let, let's just say they started calling names, and I'm... Wow, they were just... I, I don't know where these people come from, but... It, so, so there was those kind of comments, but there was a lot of well-thought-out comments, too, and... Um, if you've been following this, you're probably either completely annoyed with all the drama rotating around Patreon, or you're completely fascinated. And it's interesting to me how many, how much exposure it's gotten. I mean, all the way up to the New York Times that wrote articles about this. The very biggest YouTuber, PewDiePie, made a video about Patreon and talked about this, brought up some great points. There's all these legal opinions about if they're doing antitrust violations and all this stuff. It's been crazy, and huge uh, Patreon people have left the system, like Sam Harris. And Jordan Peterson just announced he's leaving Patreon, and he's setting up his own. I mean, these, these are guys that made seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 maybe, uh, that's the assumption, uh, a month on Patreon that are leaving. Now, when I look at Patreon and their overall growth and how many people are on it, I don't see any real dips. That's what's interesting to me about this. It doesn't seem like it's really affecting them negatively. So even with all the drama, the negative drama, I think it, it might not be hurting them because it's just, it's giving them more attention. I've had some patrons leave because of this. I'm definitely looking at what's going on. I'm looking at this I'm really curious at what this thing is that Jordan Peterson is making and talking about. Um, I've also considered using Gumroad as an alternative because I, I've really been happy with Gumroad in the past and I was thinking of setting up a subscription service through Gumroad for people who don't want to use Patreon. I just don't think there's going to be that many people who insist on leaving Patreon. There, there's been a handful of people over the years who have said, I don't want to have anything to do with Patreon when I have a pledge drive. And they're like, can you give me an alternative? But this was before this stuff happened. So I kind of want to set up an alternative just for those people. But I'm not going to leave Patreon because I don't think Patreon is the issue. It, it seems to, to be coming out that the credit card processors, that PayPal, that MasterCard, and those kind of companies, Stripe, these are the culprits. Patreon is more like a, a donkey and the MasterCard and the PayPals are controlling where the donkey goes. Patreon can't do anything, really. They can stand up against these giant monolithic corporations, but it seems like they're the ones who are pulling the strings. It's kind of what I said in my last video on this, where it seemed like Jack Conte was, was given a lot of money by investors, and now those investors are trying to pull the strings. Now, that may or may not be true, but the thing we do know is that MasterCard has caused certain accounts to get defunded because Patreon has said so in public tweets. There's a lot come out about how PayPal is possibly controlling a lot of this stuff. And so it's not as much an, an issue of Patreon other than the fact that Patreon is just not standing up to these people. They're just, they're bending over backwards so they can play the game. And yeah, I guess it's understandable, but now we're, we're, we're finding ourselves in a world where if you don't play the game the right way, you can lose your access to funding tools. It's happening more and more now, and so that's the side of it that's more concerning. It really is like the mark of the beast. Right? 666. You're probably all familiar with that, whether you're religious or not. But the book of Revelation talks about the mark of the beast. And it talks about it as being a mark on people's hands or their foreheads. And if you don't take this mark and pledge your servitude to this system, then you will be removed from it and you won't be able to buy or sell anything. That's exactly what's going on with Patreon. If you're not pledging to their terms of service and to the terms of service now of the credit cards, MasterCard, what they want, the whims of this system, then you're getting your ability to actually buy and sell taken away from you. There's a lot of ways to interpret the book of Revelation. The most popular one is looking at it as if it's a book of future events. I don't believe that's how the book of Revelation is, though. What I understand the book of Revelation to be talking about is the period of time 
in between Christ dying on the cross all the way to the end of the world and how it's always going to be structured this way with authorities that rise up and try to get you to serve and worship them. Otherwise, they're going to pull away your ability to buy and sell. And it's happened all throughout history that these governing powers try to get people to stop serving God and instead serve them. It's the mark of the beast. You get a mark on your hand and your head. And in the Old Testament, your hand and your head meant what you think about and what you do. Governments and authorities are always trying to get people to serve people with their minds and their actions. And if they don't, they want to strip away the ability to buy and sell. Strip away the ability to, to live unless you serve them. And it's always in opposition to God. It doesn't need to actually be a barcode on your hand. We're already using credit cards. We're already at the whims of these big monolithic uh, money companies. So, with all that said, Patreon, MasterCard, PayPal, all these companies, everybody is trying to get you to take their mark and serve and worship them with their actions, what you do, and what you say, and what you think online. And I know that all the Christians out there, there's a whole pile of Christians that are like really worried about taking the mark of the beast, but you got to remember, it's, it's, it goes both ways. Christ also said that those who follow him have a seal on their foreheads. So we don't have a mark on our foreheads, we have a seal on our foreheads. And the seal is sealed. We can't unseal it, it's sealed, right? That says, we belong to God. And I don't want to try to teach theology on this channel either, but these are just my observations and what I've learned over the years, and this is, this is the way I look at it. So what do we do with Patreon? Why, why am I still on Patreon if it's part of this beast system? Well, money is part of the beast system. Governments are part of the beast system. Every giant authoritative system is part of this. Now, the real question is, are we going to bow down and worship those authorities, or are we going to worship God? Is our minds, is our focus, and what we say, and what we do with our hands, going to be serving God? Or is it going to be bowing down and serving any one of these infinite numbers of beast systems that are out there? whether it's patron or whatever, it's, to me it's all a lesser of two evils, a lesser of a hundred evils. But at the end of the day, if I want to buy food, I need to use credit cards, I need to use uh, my banking systems, I need to use Patreon. And now that everything's digital, now that everything's done online and transactions, I mean, even if you live with just cash, you still could be worshiping cash, you know? Jesus also talked about you cannot have two gods. You cannot serve money and God. You'll love one and hate the other. And it's the same thing. You have to make a choice. Like, what are you, what are you doing with your hands and thinking about? That's where your mark is. It's in what you do and what you say and think. Wow, this turned into a really different video than I thought it would be. But anyway, that's what I think. <laughs> so... Um, so Patreon, I, yeah, I don't want to bow down to any of them because they are not what gives me life. They are not what gives me money. Really, I believe if God wanted to give me money, he could do it any way he wants. He's, right now, he's just using Patreon to fund me a little bit. And also, also in 2019, this company, Cave Pictures Publishing, has actually given me money. I believe that's completely God setting that up. But you know, I still have to use PayPal. I still have to use MasterCard. I still have to use um, my bank account. I still have to use Visa. I'm still using Stripe. All these companies could at any point snap their fingers and say, you don't deserve this because you're not doing what we want you to do with your hands and with your mind. I think that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. If we're given that decision, what are we going to do? Are we just going to bend over backwards and do whatever the corporations say? Or are we going to stay true to our beliefs and our morals and our God? Right? Anyway, this has been your, your Sunday School lesson for the day. We're going to keep using Patreon, but we're not going to bow down and worship it. I'm not going to tattoo Patreon on my hand and my forehead. Okay, Patreon? Got it? I'm not going to do that with Visa or MasterCard either, or PayPal or Stripe. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. Uh, love you guys. Have a good new year, and I'll see you soon. Thank you for checking out my video. My name is Jason Grubaker. I make comic books and graphic novels. You can check them out at Coffee Table Comics. But before we go on, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell too. Give it a thumbs up.
up and watch it all the way to the end three times and then share it on all your favorite social media accounts.